Okay, so now the molds are cured, the clay's out, and we're ready to pour the latex. Um, so just take the one mold. Now, oh, one thing I want to explain thoroughly is you got to get all the, like if there's little pieces of clay or, or plaster, make sure that it is, they're gone. Because if you got a little chunk of plaster and you go put them together and it makes a little gap, eighth inch gap, your latex will just come out. Now that happens a lot of times. And if that happens, you can, um, if it's not severe, you can just uh, stick clay, uh, fresh clay into the crack where you see it leaking and then just kind of stay with it a while, make sure that it's stopped. Eventually the latex will set up and it will seal that uh, so, so it won't keep doing it. But that's really important. It's a little detail, but boy, it you'll suffer. And try to be gentle so you don't chisel up your your mold. Okay, so give it a little a little twist and stuff. And um, now this is a strap you buy at a mold shop. And um, they work great. So, stick that on. And I use two, it uh, usually takes a couple, uh, even if it's smaller mold, usually two is, uh, is what you need. Now I'm finding a little, a little area that I can stick this in that will help. I don't know if you can see it, but there's just a little divot here and a little divot over here. And that's, and you want to make sure that the strap is, you know, it's really snug so that when you cinch this stuff up, and I'm cinching it pretty hard. I'm, I'm getting it. I'm like, uh, not quite that much. Quite a bit of force. So it looks, and you can look inside and you can feel and make sure that you've, um, that you've got it they're, they're seated well into the keys and everything. And you can, you know, like I say, it, it's easier if you have littler molds, you can kind of wrangle them around. So the next step is to swing the mold up. Now, this is a little detail, but it's good to have heavy stuff. It could be big, pieces of concrete. In this case, we've just simply taken five gallon buckets and filled them with water. And that gives you a nice heavy way to sit these upright. And just, even though it's leaning to one way, just so that I feel more comfortable, I want to put one on each side. And so, now we're ready for the latex. Now this latex should be a mass making latex. You can buy it in um, five gallon uh, containers, one gallon containers. Uh, you can get all sorts, but it's not makeup latex. There's a kind of latex that's designed to put on your face. Those usually come in smaller bottles anyway, but this is mask making latex and um, you can get it from places like Monster Makers have really good latex. Um, we buy it in 50 gallon drums and I, I don't think that company sells it like by the gallon or five gallons, but, uh, but should be able to find it on the internet. If not, like if you've got a Reynolds nearby, uh, they would have it. There's, there may be some 
supply place, especially if you're in a big city. And just kind of pick one spot and slowly let the latex come up. And then you let it sit. It's very easy, but here's the thing. The thickness will vary for a number of reasons. You might have um, the molds, like these molds are still fairly wet, so it won't set up as fast. Um, if you pour them instantly, <laughs> right when they're made, sometimes they really suck because they're still crystallizing and things. I wouldn't count on that. I, in fact, I think it's better to let a mold rest for a, a day or two minimum before you start pouring it. Don't have to, uh, but it just, just lets the mold dry out well. Um, so as far as thickness, if you leave these in for an hour or something around that, you should get about an eighth of an inch. If you leave them in two hours, you'll get an eighth and maybe a sixteenth. If you leave them in three hours, you might get two eighths or less. It's, it's, it's diminishing returns. So you just have to kind of figure it out and decide yourself what's more important, uh, having them real soft and, and flexible like a, like a tighter fitting glove, or if you've got big things like these do, you might want to let them sit for, for several hours. And um, uh, so that's the, uh, that's the goal. We're going to let these set a couple hours. That should be enough. And um, um, we will come back when they're ready to drain and, and we'll show you how to do that. It's time. So, um, this is, the, the, because I made this in one mold, it's a little trick. I've got two five gallon buckets on the floor. Um, but we're gonna make it happen. Fear not. The main goal is not to get any on yourself. And I don't know if I've ever mentioned it, but latex and clothing, they do not mix. You pretty much, you're pretty much done. If, uh, if you get latex on clothes, sometimes you can dremel them off. And we'll actually be dealing with a Dremel gun or a Dremel tool here shortly. So you can let most of it drain out and then tip it. Try not to tip it off the table. I'm gonna. And you wanna get. Now, in this situation, you've gotta. Eh. It's making a little bit of a mess. But um, I'm sure there's a more clever way to do this, but this isn't it. But anyway, we have tables and troughs and things usually. So when you get most of it off, then you wanna let it set totally upright. Now, uh, I would get a two by four or something because if it sits, flat on the table, it starts to set up, and then you go to pull it and the table rips it out of the mold, and of course your latex is not cured, and so it will um, it'll ruin it. So it's better to have a little something to lean it against so that they can finish draining. And uh, so this is another one of those. Five, 10 minutes, probably enough. Go 15 or 20, just to be sure. Cause you know, the latex is draining out. You want it to, every drop to drain out and even to coagulate on the inside of the mold. So it's stopped moving completely before, before you flip it down. So I'm going to let this drain uh, about uh, 15, 20 minutes. And then I'll flip it down, get a fan on it. I think maybe some hair dryers since we're burning daylight and um, and we'll go over that when I when I get back and we'll get this thing these hands dry and ready to go and I will be back shortly all right so let's see what we got now 
I put two hair dryers in this on low and I, you can stick them in there. You kind of got to, you got to make sure they're going to sit, you know, whatever you got to do. I had a little platform and things. Here's another thing that I just have the hardest time convincing people of. Um, it's kind of like, well, if it dries fast on low, it'll dry faster on high. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not, that's not true. It's like, if you can go through a school zone at 15 or go through at 50, you actually get slowed down more because the cop's going to get you. So the problem with turning up high is you're not cooking the latex. You're just getting it to release the moisture. And while you can get latex up to pretty hot, they say 160 degrees, uh, you start getting above that, you are going to ruin that latex and start all over. So please take my word for it. Make sure they sit, they can go inside a little, and, but you gotta put something so they don't, you know, like move like this and then the next thing you know, they're aiming right up at a certain spot. So I'm going to take plaster just because we know you have some left in your bag. Now you can use talc and I'm just using a little bit here. Um, maybe a thimbleful. You can use talc. But if you do, and we've used it for years, um, I think we even used cornstarch at one point. But if you get talc, please don't get scented talc because your monsters will smell like a baby's butt. And we can't have that. <laughs> All right. So you just take the, the hair dryer and blow it in there. Well, that one's not plugged in. All right, so I'm going to take back something I told you to do. Um, as a company, we like to put both molds in, or both hands in one mold, because you find one mold, you can't find the other, they get the wrong one, you think you're ready to go, and they don't. So we do that. Um, but these, especially since those fingers were long, they're a little, clumsy. So I would say, unless you're going to be mass producing and things, you probably ought to do two separate molds. So I eat my words on that. I'm sorry. Um, I told you differently, but I think you're probably going to be better off. They're going to be easier because if they're too heavy and you're trying to manhandle it, you can chip the mold and all sorts of stuff. Now these, um, oh, here's a thing I was going to tell you when you put these straps on and these straps are you can get them at like a mold making supply place an art supply place uh, and they are made to strap molds together and this is one of the things i really think you have to get some people put duct tape around them and things but you need to squeeze those molds together very hard because otherwise you're going to pour the latex in and it's going to if they're not really tight it's just going to leak out and you'll have a big mess and and uh, you'll have to stick clay in the uh, in the edges and so strongly recommend getting mold straps they're not expensive you just have to find them probably find them on online somewhere but here's the other thing i've had these pop off in the middle of pouring or something or sitting there and so i always put this in to make sure they can't, because if this is in here, they can't pop off, you, you can't do it. But they can do that real easy otherwise. So that's, you don't have to, just my recommendation. So anyway, the, um, the latex has sat in the molds for an hour and a half. Um, you know, we're trying to move things along pretty fast. I would honestly, hands this big, I would give them a couple hours, maybe even a little more. But, um, you know, we're, we're, that's why I use the hair dryers. The other thing is a fan works just as well, probably better because you don't have to keep monitoring, make sure your the hair dryers aren't uh, falling out and things. So I would recommend a fan and then just leave the fan on it for four to six hours and they should be good. Um, but 
if you choose to use the hair dryers, it will speed it up. And that's what we did. I think, I think they've been under the hair dryer for a couple hours. Okay, so we're ready to see what we've got here. Let's see, I think I'll take them out this way. This is a heavy mold. So the first thing is to kind of break the latex free. Let me make sure you can see that. So I'm just breaking it free anywhere it might have gotten hooked. And then I want to break it free as much as I can inside the mold. And I'm just kind of side to side. It's not a huge deal, but it just it's just that much less to get stretched. If, if something hooked in the mold or something, it, you'd be like, and maybe tear your latex. So. Look at those monsters. So, let me let you get a good shot at them. So that's what it looks like, your sculpture now in hollow rubber. And I would just pull them out gently because even though they may be cured, you know, I'm gonna, yeah, they, they're, they are moist, at least that finger. So I'm gonna put a little more latex in it and and hopefully save the day. Now, if you do get little tears and things, you can certainly, or uh, talc, you can certainly patch them up. Well. But uh, like I say, we're pushing it. To, you know, to get this thing filmed and so forth. But, you know, if you don't have to rush it, don't. I mean, leave them overnight if you can. All right, tragedies abound. It's moist. So I didn't let them dry long enough. Um, we may abort. We've ripped the tip off a thumb and we've, uh, we've got the latex sticking it to itself. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with here, guys. And we got a missing thumb. So, uh, you saw how we did it. We just didn't leave it in long enough. So, I'm going to pour another set. And we'll take that set out. But you've seen the steps. You know how to do it. And um, we'll just have to paint these another day and paint a new pair. And that's so sad. This... I don't know. I'm weeping on the inside. All right. We'll be back next time. We'll, we'll get some good ones out of the mold. And, um, and we will uh, paint those. And everything will be good. And the sun will come out. And the birds will chirp. And... But not today. Okay, for this... You're gonna need a Dremel tool and scissors. Now, you can buy a Dremel tool like this. Uh, they, this one's dual speed, it's battery powered, um, and these work pretty good. The um, wheel that goes on them, I knew you'd never be able to see it. So I got a big one from a big one, but it's like this. It's got little, very stiff fibers and it goes in and it just Dremels away the, um, the uh, excess latex and but you know it's it's smaller to fit that gun the other the gun that we use 
Uh, and the reason I show that is so you don't have to feel like, oh, gee, now I got to buy an air compressor to do this thing. No, you don't. Um, the other tool is um, an air-driven uh, uh, Dremel tool, and it's you can get these things all over. Harbor Freight, if you have them in the area, that they're cheap. I don't know. This may be twenty bucks, and um, and you can. It's got little screw-off wheels, and you just screw them on. The um, they come in different coarsenesses. I, I would say the finer is what you're looking for. And that, after you trim the flange off, um, that's what what we use, or a Dremel tool. I used to use Dremel tools all the time. It's just, uh, this is a little bit more of a commitment, but we find it worth it. So uh, just imagine that I could do the same thing with the Dremel tool, be a little slower. So we're gonna start with this. Now it's got all this flange left over from uh, the mold, and so we're gonna trim it off and then we'll Dremel it. So here we go. Try to get it as close as you can. And just, but you don't wanna, you know, cut a hole in it. The goal here is just to trim off all this flange. And then whatever's left over, the Dremel tool will take care of. Um, so we discussed in the last video about why we did stuff for um, one piece molds. And, and uh, this is one of the reasons um, we, we have to go to one piece mold is if we did it this way on every pair of hands, we would charge 200 bucks per pair cause this is a lot of work. But if you only need one pair of hands or a couple, even a few, it's not worth making a, another mold. And, and to make the other mold, um, you would need to, while it's still in the original mold, while the hands are still in the original mold, you would need to dry them out completely, not talc them, and pour in foam. Now the foam we use is a, a two-part polyurethane foam, and it's it's you don't bake it or anything. That's a different kind of facial foam, but you just mix the two halves together, and it foams up very quickly, and you can demold in about a half hour, and you can get those foams, and they're but they're soft, you know, they're they're squishy. You can get those foams from a place like Reynolds and they've got a large variety of them. Um, I'm sure there's other places on the internet, but polyurethane, two-part polyurethane foam. Now, here's a little warning. Don't be pouring that stuff in a small room or something and, and breathe, because it gives off some very toxic fumes. So you wanna be in a garage, maybe with a fan, be outside, because that's, I believe it's cyanide, and it's not pleasant. It's, most of what we do is very uh, organic stuff, like the plaster and the, the latex. Um, but there are some things that you just need to read the, the labels thoroughly. Uh, contact cement's another one. Hot glue can burn you. There's things, you know. It's not totally uh, uh, without risks. Okay, and speaking of wrists, you know how I said my hand had to fit in here easily? It just slides in like nobody's business. It's actually too loose, but what I knew was that this is gonna shrink another generation because we're gonna make a mold off of this and, and it'll, it'll, it'll drop in size and, um, uh, and uh, it, as we go into production. So this is, even though they may have looked like really big, this is, these are actually 
really well sized and they're pretty darn creepy. All right, so now I'm going to get the Dremel tool. This is super nerdy, but you know, I'm blind, so I have to have glasses. And then I have to have these. Well, I guess I don't have to have these because I got my glasses on. Uh, yeah, I'm so used to putting these on. Let's see. I don't think there's any point in doing that. It's a it covers a little more territory, but that's, I'm, I'm a nerd enough. I just, I don't need to look any dumber than I do. Ed Edmonds. Monster Maker. We're going to dremel this line and I'm going to come in and, you know, I'm not laying this flat like this. I'm cutting in and I'm hitting the edge. And if you don't press right, you'll just have to get the hang of it. It'll, you know, go off like that. Also, I've got my hand under here. So you want to be sure you're not digging in there, ripping into latex. And then why is it turning red? You know, that kind of stuff. So here's what I'm, I'm going to do. Okay, so I can't talk while the Tremel tool is going, and I'm just glad they have words like mundane because that's what that this is. So I'm going to speed up the camera, and you're going to see what I'm doing. But uh, watch me just for a minute more, and then we'll speed it up. Now, when I get to the fingers, I can't. I've got to take it off, and so I'll have to hold them. But again, be keep your hands away from this. It's not super lethal but it'll, it'll give you a carpet burn and maybe cut you. So just be careful and, and don't push too hard and um, be sure you've got glasses or goggles on. So anyway, here we go. So uh, I've gone and hurt myself a little, and uh, so I'm gonna have to go to the doctor, but I'll be right back. It, I, I'm, I'll be fine, got a little stitches maybe. I'm fine, I'm not gonna go to the doctor. I, just, I found if I put the glove on it, it kind of, well, it's just, it's a little weird, but, but it, it'll be fine, I'll be fine. Just kidding, listen, I'm just, in case there's any kids watching, I got all my fingers. I just uh, couldn't resist. Now that trick I did in high school, I no grade school, <laughs> I was a little guy, and I had the mortician's wax and made it much more realistic. And I, and I put a little chicken bone in there and some blood, and and I showed uh, my PE teacher, and he was devastated. And then when he found out it was a trick. He thought it was the funniest thing either. And then he ran me into the school nurse, ran me into the principal's office, and it was just a hoot. Okay, so I've been a goofy nerd, kid, practical joker all my life. So we're gonna start, I guess I'll leave this glove on. Um, we're gonna start painting um, these and I'll get the other one dremeled up, but that's the process. And um, and it's, it's a little time consuming, but pretty cool to have your own mitts, your own custom monster hands made by you. All right, so I'll get the other one. We'll get started painting. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you how to mix the paint that you need to go onto rubber things because it's got to be elastic. And so it's very simple. We start with house paint. And I mean, go to the paint store and buy a can of house paint. Uh, you can pick exactly the color you want and have them mix it for you. And you might keep that information in case you liked it. Oh, this worked good for flesh or whatever. But you can just get the color wheel, say, I want that green, they mix it, and that'll be the color of your monster. Then you'll need water, and you'll need mass making latex, and you'll need to make sure it's not facial latex with a lot of adhesives and stuff. Mass making latex, it's available on the internet, lots of people uh, have it. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix equal amounts of all three with one caveat. All right. So, make sure your paint's stirred up well. All right, so this is a flesh color. And you just, it doesn't matter. These could be quartz, they could be little teeny things. It doesn't matter, it's just that they're equal. So, in goes the house paint. Now it's very important that the house paint be indoor house paint because I think the outdoor stuff has some chemicals to fight against the sun that, eh, they're just not good to breathe. At least that's my understanding. All right, then one part latex. and one part water. Now, this is the only one that can vary. Based on our latex um, thickness, I usually go a little less, but you can go full. Now, if I'm gonna run them through an airbrush, I'll go third to third to third. If I'm running through a quartz sprayer, it can handle a little thicker material, and then you don't have to worry about dripping so much. Um, you don't have to worry about it too much, but if you got it on thick, it could drip or whatever. So that's it. But if you mix a third to third to third, you're in good shape. And that will give you the magic formula. And this is what we've used for 40 years. And I, there are lots of other ways to do it. And you can try them all. This has just worked Great for us, it's um, super non-toxic. I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's latex from the rubber tree plant. It's uh, house paint, uh, which is, you know, they have to make that stuff safe, and water. And there you have it. This is what we base everything with, and it works great because it's half paint and half rubber, you can stretch like crazy. The next thing I wanna show you, just quickly, is to get a, a quartz sprayer like this. Now, this works just fine. I don't want that to be a stumbling block. That's some, I don't want to be like, I gotta buy $500 worth of equipment to make a monster. Oh no, these are cheap and they'll work just fine. Uh, but this is better. And these things, that we used to spend 160 bucks each for these things. and and they would fall once and break. And these are now like $20 and they're awesome. And it's just a, a suction thing. When the air comes out, it pulls the paint. You can adjust the, um, the pattern from a circle to a, a fan and the amount of paint that comes out, the amount of air pressure down here. And what we do is put a, um, a coupler on like this so that you can just do this and you're good to go. The, the thing is, with this, you want to um, uh, put that on so that, like, say you have several colors now. We have, like, dozens. <laughs> so I have a paint can for every color. It's just very fast to go between colors and change colors. Okay, so that is what we use for paint. You pour it in. Always shake it before you use it. I just shook it so I don't have to, but because um, it will settle out, especially, well, paint always does, but especially when you have the water in there, it'll settle out um, and needs to be 
kept shaking up. So that is the magic formula. And um, I don't know, it's, there's, like I say, there's lots of different ones, but so, sometimes they're kind of toxic, like rubber cement paint and stuff. I'm sure this stuff works great. This isn't the only way to do it. It's the only way we do it. So that's why I'm telling you. So that's your foundation. Then I'm gonna go ahead and give you a quick thing about inks. Now, so they're always based in rubber and uh, uh, latex. And then the first thing we do, especially on really nice paint jobs, is we will do a rub out. And the rub outs, usually we use 70% rubbing alcohol. Now we've, as of late, we've had trouble getting it. And because uh, in a big run, we can go through, oh, I don't know, a gallon and a half or something. You go to the store with a shopping cart. Oh no, you can buy one. <laughs> so we discovered corn alcohol. Corn alcohol works just as good. So if you're having trouble getting isopropyl, 70% isopropyl alcohol, corn alcohol works. And I don't even know where you buy this. We just found a guy that had a 50 gallon drum, we bought it. So either one, this applies to. And so what we do is we'll take, say a, a bottle, this could be either one, and for a rub out, let's say for a, a flesh, I'm gonna give you the formula for flesh. So flesh, we use red, which is flame red, and this is FW paint. Uh, FW, there's some other ones out there and I think they work fine. The, the problem is you can't mix them, I discovered one time. I tried to use FW with something else because we'd run out and went to a local store. Didn't work, so I would stick with FW, we do, and um, so here's the formula to do, um, always shake them, and, and you have to shake hard, especially white. Um, so to do a quart, and you can extrapolate this down or up, I use one whole bottle of flame red, and let's see, I. I usually do by the gallon, and then it needs 15 extra. Now that's some exciting video right there. All right, then um, brown 12 of these, just the dropper fulls. and black is five. Okay, then you just shake it up and this gives you a nice reddish, brownish, it's not super red, it's not super brown uh, and and that's very nice for flesh colored things. Now, if you're doing something that's gray or uh, brown or something, you might wanna do a brown rub out and you'd use much more brown, less red, uh, but still a lot of red with, and this is antler brown, by the way, flame red, antler brown, and black. Uh, you'd use more brown, less red, and you might beef up the black because it's how dark you want to go. And, and let's say you were doing some snow beast or something, you need a blue rubber up. Well, you do, you blue, you might mute with black, a uh, gray rub out. We use like one bottle of white, one bottle of black per quart, and you get a nice gray. Uh, so that's just something you'll have to experiment with, get a look you like, but that is, how we mix the rub out. Now, these same inks we use for detailing and eye colors and things. And we thin all of them. We'll thin them half and half. So if we're gonna do a black and we're gonna run it through an air gun, it'll be half isopropyl alcohol, 70%, or corn alcohol. 
and then half the ink and it flows nicely and, and comes out of the airbrush great. And so if I want blue detail, maroon, green. Now, when it comes to white, that's a different story. We never thin the white because we want that to be opaque. So like if I've done an eye and I want to go in there with a color, then I'll take the, the other colors of inks that to make blue. I would just add some blue until it looks about right. Usually I mute those colors a little with black so it's not poster colored. And you get the color you want. You spray that on, so white's a little different. You know, it's the same with watercolor. Watercolor, you know, they blend and mix and stuff, but when it comes to white, man, you leave that stuff alone. So, um, and be sure and shake the white good. So that's the foundation of a rub out, and then that gives you all the wrinkles and, and shapes, and then you come in and you haze and um, so forth. For gloss, if it's eyes, we use um, Devcon, um, a uh, five minute clear epoxy. You can get it like this, and that's uh, good. It's like a twin hypodermic needle. Or you can get the bigger bottles, which we like to do. And, but, like if you're doing mouths or fingernails, that's too glossy. It doesn't look right, and it also can get cracked and things. So like for fingernails, we use this, or mouths. And this is Liquitex uh, gloss medium get it at art stores and, um, and, and it flexes, which is great. Right out of the bottle you can use this stuff. You don't need to thin it at all. Um, this stuff is more of the same uh, kind of thing except it's thick. It's a gloss gel. And so we get the gloss gel and we mix it with food color. Now we buy these big bottles. You might be going to the grocery store and getting something this size. These come in smaller sizes too. They're fairly pricey. But to make blood, we just, it's just food color and, and uh, this gloss gel till it's about the right thickness. And um, uh, that's kind of by eye. And, and then, if you want to get sophisticated, you can take food color and use drops of blue and green to get different, uh, like fresher or more oxidated. I don't usually do this. I usually, the only color I'll add is black, which you can buy black food color at Halloween time at, you know, the department stores like Walmart. Okay, and I'll say this, because I found out about this from Alan Hobbs, who has Still Beats, Still Beats Studios. That is another great resource. If you like this kind of information, I would go to Alan Hopps Stilt Beast Studios. And he does so many videos and shows you so many things. And, uh, and he tests stuff and so forth. We've got our ways of doing things. And, um, but he experiments and so forth. So I would highly recommend that site for, you know, details. But anyway, moving along. Um, the once the rub out is sprayed on and again i don't want to i don't want to put up barriers you can spray the rub out on after it's based now the base has to dry give it you know an hour or two uh, on a fan with a fan maybe 30 minutes after that base coats dry with the latex then you spray on and we use a quart sprayer like this um, you spray on the um, rub out which i just showed you how to mix and then you let that dry a little and rub it off with a sponge that's just in the in the either corn alcohol or uh, isopropyl alcohol whichever you decide to use and squeeze it out and rub it off and that's that is it that is the foundation of how we paint that's everything that's the super gloss the semi-gloss the blood the coloring the base if you get that down man you can you can do anything you want with your monsters so that's it i'm going to go get the hands and we will start painting all right here is the creepy hands now um as i was dremeling uh, i created a couple holes which were i patched them with just some thick latex and you can use um ammonia on on a brush and just smooth them out really nice and then let them dry uh i'm going to paint them with the um 
the base we just went over with uh, the latex and, and water and, and house paint. But first, I just wanted to show you, this is that same mixture, but you can brush it on. You know, there's no, it, you could, you know, if you're not doing an army of zombies, there's no reason you can't brush that on. You just make sure and get in all the details and you'll have to wait for it to dry, just like we're gonna do with this other. But uh, that's, it just depends on how deep you're going into this monster stuff. Okay, so I've got to wear a mask when I'm spraying with a quartz sprayer. And so I use this, um, it's a 3M mask and we've tried a bunch and um, this one works really well with beards, which is important for me. Now, um, and, and again, 3M makes it, they've got a, a funny shaped filter. Um, now somebody out there might know of something else. Uh, you know, it's like, no, no, the P3719, you're a jerk, works much better. Well, maybe that's true, but this is what we found to work, especially with beards. And so that's why I'm telling you, they're not paying me. I'm just telling you, this is a great mask. And we're off, won't take long. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for about a half hour under a fan and we will be right back to finish. Okay, so if you've seen Karate Kid, you know wax on, wax off. That's what we're gonna do, here we go. And this is uh, that red, kind of liver colored, maroony rub out. off so I can um, talk to you what I, about what I'm doing I'm basically just lightly rubbing in the in the you know I'm squeezing this out pretty good because um, you don't want it to run into the cracks and get the stuff that's in the cracks out and I go between the fingers and you know when you're doing it just before you uh, stop, just look at it carefully. Make sure you, you've covered all the real estate. And um, now, when I put on rub out and I'm doing monster stuff, it's, I exaggerate reality. I, I you know, your hands wouldn't be shadowed quite this much, but I, I like to think of the monsters like in a, in a dark, room with a single light source so it's these these uh, crevices are popped 
more than they might be in a bright lit room, but it, as long as it's not too over the top, it, uh, it reads well. Now these fingernails, I'm gonna paint white. You know, if it was some kind of beast or something, I might make them black. But for a character like this, I'm gonna paint white and I'll show you how to, to make them look good. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the detailing. Um, I'm just gonna do a blue, a purple lake, and white. I've got black here if I felt like I need to punch something. But, um, and this is kind of uh, just the shifting of colors. You know, I'll probably do the Kind of the tips of the fingers here and uh, the knuckles just to break up the you know because no, nobody's flat you're not one color But I'm not being real careful. I'm just kind of identifying identifying areas, you know, uh, that I kind of want to shift color on a little bit, and so that just breaks up the the uh, space. And then we'll uh, go to Purple Lake, which is one of my favorite colors in the FW um, lineup. And I'm going to go over a lot of the same places. I'll go in some other areas too, slightly. Um, and of course, this simulates uh, blood flow and blue and and red, or kind of, you know, what happens. Your blood, whether it's oxygenated or not kind of shifts redder or bluer depending on if it's going out of the heart after getting all oxygen enriched with the lungs or it's coming back for more. Okay, so I am gonna punch it a little with black and this is subtle and it's really I'm, I'm treating it more like a shadow, um, it, like in the deeper spots and things, just to give it a little more oomph. So, in some of my darker places, I'm just gonna beef it up between the fingers. See how that just kind of punches it?
Okay. Now, we're gonna do fingernails. I'm gonna take them off so you can see what I'm doing a little bit here. Okay, so I want to paint these little, you know, like the, what do you call, I'm sure it's got a name. It's not cuticle, it's something, but there's a little white area that's stronger white. And then I'll hit the whole nail. I hope you can see that. I'll hit the whole nail with the white, but that little, Area at the bottom, I'm gonna hit more. And these are kind of pointy, so I'm not worrying about too much being rounded, but on a uh, human, they're rounded. So the combination of the hazing and the gloss will give them the distinction of, of being a different uh, kind of a surface. So it'll give them that hard look, basically, that your fingernails have. Now this is the Liquite Liquitex Gloss Medium. Now, I a lot of times will spray this on, but since the fingernails are very defined, like on a mouth, I might spray it on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna brush it on. It'll just look that much more realistic. I'm trying to hold these so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so that gives you that nice, glossy fingernail look. So we are done, and now I'm gonna go get Zarkon, and we're gonna have him show you what it's like to have good monster hands with your monster. I am Zarkon. I can crush you pitiful, puny humans with the power of my electrostatic energy. <coughs>